Mike, what is going on with Mike Rapoli? <laughs> well, I, 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 I mean, this guy, like in the last few months, it's just like spiral, spiral, spiral. Well, it's, okay, I, I, I'm going to... I don't mind what he did. And I, I will at least give him props that he put money where his mouth is and like hired people and built something up to say, okay, we're going to try and change things in horse racing. But who in their right mind goes on Twitter to your followers and then says, am I commissioner? Yes or no. Like if you do that on Twitter and you lose, if they, if more people vote, no, you're just, you're doing something wrong. Cause no one likes you in that case. Right? Like it, to me, it just made no sense. That, okay. This is how I'm just going to self-proclaim. I don't love anyone who self-proclaims himself anything, but like to, to say, this is the election. I am now commissioner of horse racing. It's like, okay, dude, like you might as well have just said I'm commissioner of horse racing and started doing it, and I would have respected that more than having a fake poll on Twitter. Which, by the way, you totally would not have not done this anyway had that been a no vote instead of a yes vote. He also was like threatened to quit four times, and like I'm kind of over people threatening to quit and then continuing to do something because they're trying to use them getting out of it as leverage versus just you know continuing on and saying okay I don't like how this is let's figure out how we can change that. So yeah. There are a lot of things that Mike Rapoli does that are really great for this sport. Um, Agreed on his that. Aftercare, his yeah, aftercare what? donations, his his backstretch worker, like the, the amount of money that this, and he's got a lot of money, but he puts a lot of money in the sport, not just in the horses, like the people, like the backstretch yep. workers, the the chaplaincy associations in, of New York. What he, he did a for lot the, of great things. What he did for the backstretch of Belmont was phenomenal. I don't know if you saw the 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 story that they did on that, but he like put it in a school there. He put like he he did yep. a phenomenal job for the backstretch of Belmont. And he's done a lot of really good things for horse racing. It's just this one irks me. Right, and that's the thing. I don't want. I, I think I started this off on, but it's just currently Mike Rapoli seems to be um, spiraling pretty bad. But he does a lot of great things and he has great ideas. This is he's you know what he's doing. I don't know if you even remember this, but Aaron, if he's still watching, would he's become luch 2.0 you remember ron pellucci mm -hmm. way back when you and i started this show yep. and luch was a freaking maniac on twitter um and now what luch was doing rapoli hasn't even come close to but he's he's starting to approach luch levels here and luch was somebody who 80 million times like i quit i quit i can't do it i'm not gonna do this and, and no this is terrible and then two days later he's back or he's spending a bunch of money so you know what you know what i wished that he would he would do like okay if you like, if you want to be commissioner of horse racing, I wish you would actually act like a commissioner. And then you have to, but to do that, think about every other major sport, right? Every single team is owned as a private entity. None of them are public companies. So none of them have to report to a board of directors. None of them have the stock price to worry about. If someone wanted to do this right, you go and you buy CDI, you buy Naira, you buy uh, Stronic Group. And you make it eight tracks and you privatize those eight tracks. Each one has a single owner. And then those eight tracks sign jockeys, sign trainers to contracts that they can run at those places. So they get paid whether or not they win or not, they get paid. But you cannot run at those tracks if you're not signed on. And then all of a sudden you control everything because all the takeout would be the same. All of the different race times you choose because you're owning all of those places and you create a privatized horse racing. And then you're able to have standardized rules. You're able to have standardized takeout. You're able to control what the the, you know, the suspensions are because you have a single commissioner who then has the ability to suspend trainers, suspend jockeys. Like It makes it so much easier to police the sport if you privatize it. The problem is no one wants to step up and buy the 10 most expensive racetracks in America to be able to privatize it and actually make it flourish. Yeah, and that it is fantasy land. It's complete fantasy land. That's actually how you fix the problem. If anyone wants to try and fix the problem, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, it is. And that's the, I think it, he's coming from a good part. Like, at least we want to believe it seems like he's coming from a really good place with what he's trying to do. It's the execution and the planning or lack thereof. Like if he creates this, what, National Thoroughbred Alliance or Commission or whatever the hell it was called, and he hires Pat Cummings, super smart guy in the world of horse racing from a business perspective, mm -hmm. trying to understand and improve it. And you have the horse racing symposium, which is kind of a joke to most of us anyway, but it's supposed to be about making change. And neither of you go there or even attempt to go there. It's hard for me to believe that you want to make change and you tweet out about like, well, we all have to work together. If you're not working with anybody and you're not making the effort, you're not showing yourself like you show yourself all over Twitter. You'll put yourself out there a million times and your echo chamber and all your friends and all your followers that are. Yeah, yeah, we, we love it. Yeah, go might go. 
such a tiny little percentage of the world of horse racing. And well, horse racing is such a tiny little percentage. So it's just, it just gets ridiculous when this stuff happens with, with Mike Rapoli. Just, yeah. ah! It, yeah. the, the idea is there. Just your execution, like everything in horse racing, your execution sucks balls. Well, and, But I will say, like, good on him for hiring Pat Cummings. Because that is someone yes. who, like... It, it's, very smart idea. Yeah, very smart man who knows the industry very, very well. And he, like, he's... You know who's paying that salary? Mike Rapoli. So he, you got to give him yes. credit for that, at least, right? Like he's putting the money toward it. But it's just, I, I wish that, uh, I, I wish that Fantasyland would could exist, and you could actually, with one swoop, make it so that you can fix the sport. But that's just, it's not possible. Okay, so Curtis Mellon, this will be the last thing we'll bring up. Curtis Mellon says it's only a matter of time before Rapoli tries to run an unraced horse in the Breeders' Cup. Would you believe Mike Rapoli would try to do that? With Todd Pletcher, you think he would try and force Pletcher to run an unraced horse in a Breeders' Cup race? Because that's what Luch tried to do. He got I mean, pissed off at the Breeders' Cup and threatened to quit once because the Breeders' Cup said, this horse has never touched the ground. We don't care if it's not a full field. You're not racing a maiden, unraced horse in the damn Breeders' Cup. I wouldn't be shocked if he tried it. Like, I, it would be hard. Like, I don't, you're, it's never going to work, right? Like, Right, but he would try it and then throw a giant stink about it, threaten to quit, and show up two days later at the sales. But, like, he would totally throw a maiden in there. And I wouldn't even say there's anything wrong with that, right? Like, if, you know, because, yeah. Uh, he totally hey, threw a maiden 14th, in there. he has got a fourth leg. It's just not where the broken one's supposed to be. Yeah. Whoa. 